Hello, welcome back to Creative Adventures. Today I am working on another cookie set. This one is based on The Nightmare Before Christmas and it's actually a recreation of a cookie set that I did about a year and a half ago. Um, I made these cookies for my best friend's baby shower. So I had another friend ask me to recreate this set uh, for an event he's having later this month. So let's get started on these now. All right, just like last time, I already have my cookies baked and I already have my colors mixed up. Um, obviously, this is a pretty simple set. Uh, the Jack Skellington faces are going to be circles and the Jack on a Hill is a square. And that's it, we just need two shapes, so it's pretty easy to get these done. Set that off to the side. Uh, for our colors, we do have four colors. Black, white, um, a golden yellow color, and a pretty dark navy. Um, so the, let's start with the white. Obviously the white is literally just the icing. I don't use any color in that. I don't have my tips on yet, but I did do a, um, piping consistency and a flood consistency. For my yellow, same thing, piping and flood. I mix this color up using um, a little bit of egg yellow and lemon yellow. I think I used about equal parts of each until I got it to the color that I wanted. Um, for the navy, I used a whole lot of Americolor navy and a little bit of super black to get it this color. And this will darken up some as it sets. It's already starting to darken from when I first mixed it. Um, a note about this consistency, um, this is 20 second icing, which means it's a little bit thicker than flood consistency, but it's not piping consistency. It's somewhere in between. And what they mean by 20 seconds is when you're mixing it in your bowl and getting your consistency right, once it levels off in the top, if you run a spoon or a knife through the surface of it, it should take about 20 seconds for the two halves of that surface to come back together. So that's what 20 second icing is. Um, and then for the black, I also did flood and piping consistency, but not nearly as much piping because there's not a whole lot of piping to do. This is mainly gonna be for putting on his smile on the faces. So let me move my stuff out of the way and we'll get started. So the first thing I want to start on today is the Jack on a Hill cookies because I know I'm going to have to pipe the hill on top of the moon in the background so I need to get the moon piped on first so it has plenty of time to sit while I'm working on the other cookies so that I can then pipe on the hill. Um, so let's get started with that. I think what I'm just going to do is first use a just a regular old yellow food coloring marker. This is the Americolor Gourmet Rider. I prefer these. I think they work better than some of the other ones I've tried. So I'm just using the... Here. This way where I can get to it. Using the edge of the cutter to draw around it so that I have just a very faint outline here of where my moon and my background is going to be. So. This part will be yellow, that'll be my moon, and this part will be black, which is going to be the sky. Um, and then once the yellow sets up, we'll use the navy to pipe the hill on top, and then Jack will be standing on the hill, he'll be black, and you'll see that black, of, that black color for Jack stand out in front of that yellow. So, just marking these real quick, so I have a guide of where to make my my moon. I think I keep saying sun and I don't know why I keep saying that. It's a moon, not a sun. It's nighttime. So I'm just going to take my yellow piping icing and I'm going to follow that line I just made. And then I'm also going to go around the outside edge here. And this will be my barrier to keep my flood icing in. And then we'll take the yellow flood icing and flood it. And 
now I'm just gonna use my scribe tool here. This is a very handy tool as well. <clears throat> and just use that to kind of push my icing up to those piped borders and get it where I want it. And there's our moon. Doesn't look like much right now, but it will. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna speed up through the rest of these. Step one down. Let's uh, move these up out of the way. And we will move on to Jack's face cookies. All right, so for these, we're gonna start by just outlining where his eyes are gonna go. Um, I don't really know how to explain what these look like because they're all kind of different in every scene and they're not perfectly circular. They're kind of, some of them are kind of an egg shape almost and some are just like a, a, a kind of a elongated like oval shape. So, and they're probably about, I don't know, maybe about a quarter, half inch down from the cookie. So they're not quite centered on the cookie, but they're not quite in the top half of the cookie either. Uh, the eyes do kind of dip down in just barely into the lower half of the cookie. So I'm just going to kind of sketch these out. I'm happy with that. The eyes do kind of slant in just a little bit too. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do for these, um, I want to get the white base on first again because we have piping to do on top of that. We'll be piping the little nose and we'll be piping Jack's smile on top of the white. So I actually want to do that first so I can get it to, so I can let it go ahead and start setting up. Um, and then after that sets up a bit, we'll go back and fill in those holes with black. So the way we're going to do this is, that piping going, we're going to follow that outline we just made for the eyes. And then we're going to outline the whole cookie. Once again, creating a solid border all the way around. Ta-da. And then we're gonna fill in all of that space with white flood icing. Once again, I'm just going to take my scribe tool and wipe it off and get that yellow off of it. <clears throat> and just kind of use the scribe tool to push around the flood icing to get it all the way up to the edges of that border and fill in all of those gaps. little bit of a tap and there's the base of our Jack Skellington face. Now that we've got our base down for Jack's faces, we're gonna switch back over to the Jack on the Hill cookies and um, 
this should be set enough to start putting on the black for the background. So we're going to do that next. I'll just take the one up here in the top corner. Um, and I'm gonna take my black piping icing and just, I'm gonna connect with the moon here in the corner and then go all the way around the border of the cookie. Do the same thing on this corner of the moon. Connect those two lines. And now we have a full border. That you can see right around the edge here. And then we will take our black flood icing and fill in that last little space. I'm gonna be real careful with this because it's a pretty skinny little area to fill in right there on the sides of the moon. I love working with black icing. I don't know why, but it's always so funny when people ask for cookies with black icing because I know that when they eat them, their mouths are gonna turn really dark purple. All right, now I'm gonna carefully use my scribe tool to move that icing into place all the way around the moon. Almost there, that's it. That looks so good. And there is the base for the Jack on the Hill cookies. Now once this uh, yellow completely sets, we'll come back in with the really dark navy, which has gotten even darker since I first started the video, which is exactly what I was hoping for. Um, so we'll come back in with that navy 22nd icing and pipe on our hill. But we do need this yellow to get really good and set before we do that. So that will be probably the last thing we do. So I'm going to set that down and go ahead and do the black on the rest of these cookies and we'll speed the video up for that part. Alright, now that we've got the base completely finished for the Jack on the Hill cookies. We can go back over to our Jack face cookies and fill in the holes with the black edge. The white should be set just enough for us to do this, so let's go ahead and do that now. It's not really any different from filling in any of the other spots. Maybe a little easier actually. Squeeze the icing in, give it a shake to smooth it out. And there's his eyes. How easy was that? I'm gonna do one quick test on one of these hill cookies to see if the base is, it might be, set up enough for me to go ahead and pipe the hill. So let me find one that looks the worst and test on that one. Let's see here. I think I'm going to start with a number two tip and see how I feel about that, but I might end up switching to a number three.
hill and go out a little bit further though. I think it's good enough for me to go ahead and pipe. It's barely set, but I think it's good enough. Now on the next one, I definitely need to make that curly cute a bit bigger because it's running together with this 20 second icing. So. So our Jack on the Hill cookies are as done as they can be tonight. The entire base is done and we got the navy blue hill piped on top of the moon. Um, I am going to have to use a food coloring marker to draw Jack on tomorrow, but I'll, I'll be using this black Americolor food color marker, but the moon, the whole cookie really has to be completely 100% dry, completely solid. So. I will not be able to do that part until tomorrow. So I think what I'm going to do next, I should be able to go ahead and finish these cookies today. Um, let me test this. Yeah, that's just set enough. I should be able to go ahead and pipe on um, Jack's mouth and nose and we'll give him a little character eye mark up at the top. So. Let's go ahead and do that now, and see, we'll take the black piping for that, and we'll start with, we'll just put two little short marks for the nose, and then for the mouth, he's got kind of a, or I'm going to do it with kind of a crooked smile. He makes a lot of different faces, but I like this particular smile for this cookie where it's kind of a, a slight, like a W shape. And then we'll just make some random stitches across the smile line. And usually on every cookie, I will do at least one. That is a cross. Just fill it in until it looks good. I probably got them about a quarter, quarter inch apart. And then whichever side you think looks the best, we'll just give them a little wrinkle up here. This just gives his little eye a little character. And look how cute that is, and look how easy that was. That cookie is completely finished, so we're going to go ahead and speed through the remaining Jack cookies, and then those are completely done tonight. We won't have to do anything for those tomorrow. call it a wrap for tonight and we'll come back tomorrow and put those finishing touches on and then uh, pop up some shots of the final cookies. All right we are back and it is the next day. It's actually the evening of the next day. So this morning I took one of my test cookies and just kind of mashed on one of the eyes of Jack's face to see if it was dry enough to package and I don't know if you can see that, but it definitely left an indent, so it was not dry enough. So I went ahead and went to work today, and I know the shipping, the UPS store that, I'm, that I use for shipping doesn't close until 8 p.m., so I decided to come home and finish them and package them and then get them out this evening. So uh, this is a test cookie. I mean, as you can see, I'm tapping on that pretty hard, and it is, it is well set. So let me get a couple of the good cookies out, and I'll show you where we're at. Yeah, this one's pretty good. Um, so here are Jack's faces all dried. 
And here are the Jack on the Hill cookies. Of course, we don't have Jack on there yet. And I think I want to do a little bit of shading on the hill as well. So we're going to do that part right now. And then I'll be able to get these packaged up and shipped this evening. So there we have it. All right, so as I mentioned already, I'm going to be using a black Americolor uh, food color writer. It's a Americolor Gourmet writer that I'll be using to draw Jack on the hill. Um, so let me go ahead and get one of these started. I want to take up the entire space from the top of the moon to the top of the hill. Um, and Jack is kind of... So I start with his head. It's just a circle. And then I like to do kind of like his neck and then an upside down triangle and fill that in. And then the front leg I do straight. And then the back leg I do kind of down a little the, from the front leg and then back. Almost like he's like bending his knee and uh, his legs a little bit kicked back. And then at the bottom of the upside down triangle I do a couple of little lines for his coattails. And then I do a couple of little lines off the shoulders because he has those weird, like, um, I don't know how to explain it, those weird things coming off of his, like, shoulder pads. And then the back arm I typically do straight out with a little dot for his hand. And then the front arm I do a part of it down and then part of it up and out because it's bent and then a couple of little lines for his hand and there's our jack our jack on the hill it's kind of hard not to get that a glare let me see if I can get let me zoom in a little bit and see if I can make it where you can see that a little better all right so start with Jack's head a little circle. Jack's neck has a little line. I'm sure that that light's probably glaring and you can't see the thing. And then we're going to do an upside down skinny triangle and fill it in. And then Jack's front leg is straight down from there. And then Jack's back leg goes down a little and then back. And then we're going to do his coattails. And then his shoulder pads. So you can see that. And then his back arm is straight in his little hand. And then his front arm is bent down and then out. And his hand there. And there is our Jack on the Hill. All right, I'm super happy with how those turned out. My little tall, skinny Jack Skellington uh, silhouettes on the hill. So the last thing I have to do is just add a little bit of shading to the hill. I think I'm gonna do some dark blue over here. It'll actually end up being a little bit lighter and then some like silvery, sparkly, like highlight on the side of the hill. And then these will be ready to package. All right, so I've got a couple of color dusts that I'm going to use here. I think that's focusing. All right, this one's from Global Sugar Art. This is a petal dust. It's navy blue. You can see the color there. And then this one is I got I got this one at a local uh, bakery supply store that I go to sometimes. It's Edible Art. Uh, and this one is Silvery Moon, and it's just a silvery shimmery color. I'm almost positive these are the same two colors I used last time. So I'm going to use um, 
the silvery color on the back side on the back side of the moon here where it would be getting highlight and I'm going to use the navy on this underside where it would be shadowed from this little curly cube so this is super easy to do I'm going to start with the silvery moon because I'm just going to use the same paintbrush for each this is the brush I'm, brush I'm using it's a pretty fluffy brush um, and it's a pretty wide brush so it'll cover more area as you can see how wide it is right there I'm just going to start with the silver I tend to just dip my brush right in and then just kind of, oh you can't even see what I'm doing. Alright, so I tend to just dip my brush right in and kind of dab it in the lid to get the excess off. And then just swipe that color right onto the back side. And that was a little more than I would have liked. Just my brush off on that paper towel and then just blend that out. Yeah, that's way more than I would have liked. Actually, I don't know. I kind of think I'm okay with that. I'm not sure. Let me do another one and see if I like it. Dust my brush off a little better this time on my paper towel. That's So I'm going to tap it and then just kind of dust it on my paper towel to get the excess off. Oh yeah, there we go. That's more what I had in mind. There, that's much better. That's a much more subtle highlight and it looks really shiny on camera because I've got a light shining down right on it, but it's actually really subtle in person. It's not nearly as shiny as it looks on camera. All right, so we're gonna do the same exact thing, but on the other side of the hill, the underside, and with navy. Isn't that a pretty pretzel dust color? This is a flat, it's not sparkly. So it, this will be even more subtle than the other. Here's a good one, just along this outer edge. Shade with that dark blue, and then blend it out over into the sparkly side. That cookie is finished. Alright, so here are our finished Nightmare Before Christmas themed cookies. I cannot wait to get these packaged up and sent in the mail to my friend. Um, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it informative, uh, then please like the video and subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. I'm going to be doing more cake and cookie videos. Um, I've got some other recipe videos coming up. I've got some soap making videos coming up that I'm very excited about. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Creative Adventures. Thanks everybody.